Today we're going to be talking about Fisker Ocean Prices. I've been reading, researching, writing so much about Fisker for the past week and I just wanted to share some of my findings and some stuff that I think is very important to future buyers, current owners, and just people who are really curious about the future of the company. So there is so much going on right now. And as a little background, I've interviewed a bunch of Fisker Ocean owners. I reached out to Fisker and I even drove an ocean in Florida. And to be honest, I really like the car. It was really nice, it was fun to drive, it was quick, it did have a lot of bugs, but I think the car itself is pretty good, but the company is just undergoing so much right now. But the first thing I wanna talk about is the Fisker prices. So as we can see here, we have the Fisker Ocean 1. So most of the owners I spoke with bought the Fisker Ocean 1 and that was about $70,000, 69,000, which is a massive sum of money to spend on a car. We're talking like Rivian territory here. It's, it's a lot of money. And now Fisker has slashed the prices in what's likely a last ditch effort to avoid bankruptcy. So we have the Fisker Ocean Extreme, which is uh, 61.5 new, and you can now get that for 37.5. That's a massive price reduction. The Fisker Ocean Ultra was 53, now it's 35. Uh, it would make a little bit more sense to get the Extreme just because the percent difference is much greater here. And then the Fisker Ocean Sport, which to be honest, I can't really find any in inventory, but they're supposedly 25,000. I haven't found any, but I'll keep an eye out. So just with the Fisker Ocean prices, we saw kind of in the beginning, uh, the Fisker Ocean wasn't necessarily a car that people were paying significantly over MSRP for. So it wasn't like the Rivian, it wasn't like the Hummer EV, it wasn't like the Tesla Cybertruck, all these vehicles. So after some of the initial deliveries, we started seeing some prices surfacing in October. And this was on cars and bids. Uh, on October 5th, 2023, Fisker Ocean bid to 65,000. The owner didn't accept it, but it just bid to 65,000. So that gives us a little bit of a, a little bit of a framework to stand with. In November, prices started going down a little bit, but it was still like, it, it was not that significant. It was kind of average. We see that with most cars. And then within the time frame of late 2023, early 2024, the prices were relatively constant. They were still declining, but maybe around like 55,000, we would see some going for, but nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. And then March hit, and that's when things really went bad for Fisker. So some more negative reviews started popping up. Some of the bugs within the cars were getting released to the world. Everyone was kind of finding out some of the issues with the vehicles and stock price tanks and also Fisker Ocean prices tank. Um, and then on top of this, Fisker's response was lowering the prices. So now we have these really nice low prices, but here's the thing. There were a lot of cars on the market that were listed in the mid 50,000 range. Now who's gonna buy a Fisker Ocean on a used car dealership lot for 55,000? That's really probably worth around 35,000. That's a brand new one you're getting. Not, we're not even talking about a used one. Um, and just today, as I recorded this, we see a Fisker Ocean up for sale for 35,000 at a dealership. Now there's plenty of dealerships with Fisker Oceans in the mid 50,000 range right now, but 35,000, that's getting very low. And this begs the question, what's gonna happen with future prices? So right here, I put the Fisker limbo state, and this is in green. This is what's happening now because we don't know what the future of the company is now, but we can have a reasonable deduction that the prices are gonna continue dropping at a pretty steep rate because we don't know what's gonna happen with the vehicles. And I denoted this by X. So X tells us a time period that Fisker is in this limbo state. And we don't know what the value of X is because we don't know how long Fisker is gonna be in this limbo state. So I think a fair reasonable guess would be that Right now, prices are gonna to continue to fall until something happens with the company. Now, I map this out. Blue is if something positive happens with restructuring. So that's maybe some company swoops in, wants to help them out, um, maybe additional funding somehow, etc. And then red is negative. So this would be worst case scenario. And Right now, we're seeing like CarMax offering people about 21,000 for Fisker Oceans. And this isn't like the Fisker Ocean Sport, we're talking the Fisker Ocean One. So, car someone spent $70,000 on. I just had a, uh, a reader message me yesterday telling me that 
he got his $70,000 Fisker Ocean valued at 21,000 on CarMax. He had so many issues with it, he just accepted it, which is a massive loss. So just projecting the future values, so also denoted by Y, once again, we don't know this, and this is gonna be the time frame in which something could happen to Fisker. So this would be after a restructuring. And if it's positive, I believe values will start going actually up on, on the up end because right now these prices are getting so low that you know $25,000 for a 230 mile range electric car that's pretty cool is a killer deal. Um, so I think prices will bounce up because once again, prices are low now because you know at that price, someone might be fine without a warranty. We, you can kind of deal with that um, at that price point and I think if something would happen positively to Fisker and then you get the car, which has a six year basic warranty, I think prices will actually start to go up because people will recognize the value in that. But if Fisker has a negative response in whatever this restructuring is, prices will probably continue to fall because it basically guaranteed that the cars will never get servicing, which is ridiculous to think about and wild. Um, but then I think prices will eventually bump up a little bit, just like we saw with the Fisker Karma, because Fisker Karma values were low, and then they kind of bumped up, and now Fisker Karma is always hover around twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and there's a uh, unique car enthusiast crowd that still wants them. So it's it's like a very it's a very niche niche, but people still do it. So I think this is just something to consider, because. I'm actually selling my Tesla Model 3 right now, and I was thinking, hey, that Fisker Ocean Sport, which I can't really find any of them, but that would be an interesting car, and I know I could write a lot of reviews on it, but I don't think now is the right time to buy. I think the best thing to do would be wait until a period like this, where I think values will come down even more. And the fact that right now you can get Fisker Ocean 1s, um, I mean, CarMax is offering 21, at a car around that price point, we're probably expecting them to sell it for around maybe 25, 30,000. So the fact that you can get a, you know, 564 horsepower electric car, that's pretty cool. It has California mode, it has a bunch of features. It's a nice car. Once again, tons of bugs, but you can get that pretty cool car probably for under 30,000 is a pretty compelling deal. So I think just right now it's a wait and see. It's obviously a terrible situation for shareholders, for vehicle owners, and for all the people working at Fisker. So I really hope something positive comes out of this, but I think now is not the time to buy a Fisker Ocean. So I think if, if you wait a little bit, see prices come down a little bit further, it might make sense. But then once again, you're probably not gonna get any maintenance on it. And if something goes wrong, that would not be great. But then again, maybe you could buy two Fisker Oceans so you could just keep one in a storage shed for parts. Thank you.